Welcome to this training on the DesignFlex Pro module within the new Gates Design Power application. My name is Gabe McCoy, and I'm one of the product fatigue engineers in Gates Computer Aided Engineering Tools Group. It's my job to support our software team with mechanical calculations and product performance models. We work to ensure the outputs from Gates design software are supported by data and theory to provide the most useful tools possible to you, our customer. We've been hard at work building the new design power application to serve as a home for all Gates design software. Design Power features a modern interface and functions, including automatic file backup and recovery, and tools such as the Design Library to streamline the drive design process. If you aren't yet familiar with Design Power, I'd recommend watching our training video, linked in the description, on the application in general before continuing with this Design Flex Pro training. With that, let's look at an example of how we would use DesignFlex Pro within Design Power. Before we look at the specifics of our example, let's define what DesignFlex Pro is. DesignFlex Pro is Gates' two-point drive design software. Oftentimes, the question comes up, how is DesignFlex Pro different from Gates' other application, Design IQ, and why do they exist separately? The answer is that they are truly different tools with different capabilities. DF Pro, thanks to the simplicity of the two-point drive limitation, works with a limited set of inputs and suggests multiple solutions for the drive across numerous product lines. DIQ, on the other hand, works with a single user-selected product and a fully defined drive with two or more pulleys to calculate details including geometry and tensioning parameters. Both applications can provide additional drive details, including shaft loading and belt speed. In addition to working with limited inputs, DF Pro also provides design information for known and existing two-point drives. Now, let's look at our use example. Let's assume that as a mechanical engineer, I received a customer request from Acme Lumber Company, and they're looking for a replacement belt for their large band saw. They've given me some specifics about the application, including motor horsepower and speed, along with some specifics about the driver and driven pulleys the shafts they mount on, and the space that they must fit into. They've given me a center distance with a relatively tight tolerance, and they've given me some information about the pulleys that they currently have installed, onto which we'll need to fit this replacement belt. They've also said they likely will need a full drive replacement next time around, and asked us to quote that. For this, they've said the driven shaft speed can vary within plus or minus 10%. This will serve as a great example for us to show some of the capabilities of DesignFlex Pro and how it can recommend all those possible solutions for a two-point drive. Let's kick this example off by starting DesignFlex Pro within Design Power. I already have a project created with a new design, and I'm going to go ahead and select the Design Flex Pro module. If any of that was confusing, please refer to the Design Power General Training for more details. There'll be a link to that in the description of this video. I also want to note some architecture changes when the Design Flex Pro module is active. 
Within the Tools drop-down menu, we have options for module settings, adjusting some visual settings within the module itself, settings for this specific design, as well as unit schemes. Just a reminder on unit schemes, here you can set your default for design power. You can select the scheme specifically for this project. In this case, I'm just going to leave them all at US customary. Or if you want to create a custom unit scheme with a mix of units, you can do that here as well. Lastly, there are module specific tools shown at the bottom. Within the Design Flex Pro module, I'm going to select the input tile. And I'll note here that for the purposes of this example, I'm going to first work through a full drive replacement for the customer. And later on, I will go through their additional request for a replacement belt. I will start by clicking change belt. And you'll notice here that several products are highlighted in bold. Those are ones that we recommend to start with, some of our latest products. I'll pick two synchronous products to design with, as well as a V-Belt product. From there, I'm going to fill in as much information as I have in the following boxes. And do note, most of these fields include default values in case you're not sure what to start with. Here in the driver box, I'm going to fill in the information I have about the motor, including power and speed. Under drive detail, I'll fill in my center distance information, 32 inches, including the tolerance information. And I'll move down to service factor. Service factor can be a bit tricky to just know off the top of your head. So we do offer a help function. We use service factor to account for things like drive conditions, uh, high temperatures, low temperatures, debris, things like that. So I'll click that help button and I'll see a table like this. This will be a little hard to read on the screen, but that's okay. Um, along the top, we just have different types of motors and operating conditions. Uh, so our motor is a normal AC motor and operated for a normal shift. Um, so I'll leave that alone. Looking in the rows, I'm going to have to find the very bottom row as that row shows sawmill equipment and all kinds of other equipment are shown in the other rows. I'll select that box corresponding with my row and column, and I'll close this by hitting OK. You will notice in the service factor boxes that my numbers have automatically updated based on my selection in the help table. So I'll move over to the driven column where I can enter some speed information. I did some calculations in the background to figure out what the customer's original speed ratio was. So I've entered that number as well as their tolerance. Next, I will select more options on the bottom of the screen. And this will allow me to input some more details specifically here about my motor. I don't have any additional details about my motor for this drive, so I'll skip over to drive detail, where I could make selections about bushings, pulley materials, and other specialty products if needed. I don't need to, so I'll move on to driver, where I can enter pulley specifics. I know some information about shaft sizes, as well as maximum outer diameter of my pulley, so I'll input that here. And I'll move over and do the same for the driven pulley. I'll go ahead and close this more information window. And I'm ready to click design. Note, I could also click the solution summary button at the bottom. 
So I've filled in all my known drive constraints and I've clicked design and now DesignFlex Pro is going to recommend solutions meeting my requirements. Here on the solution summary tile, all of those drives are shown in a table. We can select synchronous or V-belt results using the tabs. I'm going to flip over to V-belts. And we can also see drives with special considerations, drives with minor problems, maybe requiring non-stock parts. And these will be visible depending upon your user rights. We do recommend if you have a need to use any of these non-standard drives that you work directly with Gates Application Engineering. And there's a link to their email in the description of this video. I'll select one of those problem drives and you'll see it shows up in an orange highlight so I know exactly what I'm working with. I have the ability to sort drives based on a desired characteristic. By default, they show up sorted based on relative cost, but if you click any of the column headers, like center distance, for example, you can sort based upon that column. We can sort ascending or descending simply by clicking again. If you hover over a drive, you can view notes, highlighting special considerations about that particular drive. And we have the ability to print a summary of available drives. We can either do all drives, or if we've selected some with the checkboxes on the left, we can print just those selected drives. If I go ahead and do that, I'll get a report that looks like this. And if I want to see details on a specific drive, I can also open that drive's individual report simply by double clicking. I'm going to flip back to the synchronous tab for this demonstration. I'm going to sort by relative cost. And that's the one I'm going to open. So you can see here it's easy to view and work with all potential drives here on the solution summary tile. I'll double click that one and get this individual report open. Here on the drive detail report, I want to highlight some navigation options first off. At the top here, we have those print and export buttons, along with view options, zoom in, zoom out, fit to window, things like that. We can close this report or all open reports in the upper left hand corner. And on the lower left hand side, we have options to navigate to the next shorter, longer, narrower, wider belt if we want to see those for any reason. And let's highlight the sections of this report. We have our header shows all of the information about who provided this design as well as customer information which we'll fill in in just a moment. We have all of the details of the drive that was input and then we have our selected drive summarized here as well. If we scroll down on the report you'll see our notes section the same as what we saw by hovering over a drive on the last window. And if we scroll down a little further, you'll see we still have the input information at the top, and we also have tensioning information shown on this report. As you've seen here, Design Power allows for easy navigation of these DesignFlex Pro reports. Let's look at some more options that we have for working with reports within Design Power, Design Flex Pro. We have our show hide checkboxes. Those are over on the left hand side. First, we'll look at tension. If we deselect show tension, a lot of our tensioning information disappears. You'll see we still have enough information to set up the drive, but more of our detailed information is now hidden. We also have the option to work with notes. 
I can show or hide specific notes based on my needs. If I don't want to show that one, I can uncheck it, hit OK, and it disappears from the report. If I select Show Drive Price, pricing information pops up there next to Notes. And I'll scroll back up to the top where we can show or hide noise calculations for a synchronous belt. Uncheck and that disappears. And similar for basic energy savings for a synchronous belt compared to a V-belt. I can uncheck that and that information will also disappear. At the top I have the option to edit customer information. Click on that and it brings up this box where I can fill in all of the information about my specific customer. And that'll be added to the top of our report in the header section. I can add drive conditions and custom condition notes. See here if I click on new, I can add a note and I'm just going to say this is the lowest cost synchronous replacement for this particular customer request. Add that, and I'm also going to select that this is a cold environment. If you notice, the customer's located in Fairplay, Colorado, which often gets pretty cold, so I'll check that box as well. Close the window, and those show up on my report. There is a shortcut to the unit scheme here. You can make some of those same edits we've talked about previously. And we have the option to get into our savings calculator, a cool feature built into DesignFlex Pro, allowing you to calculate savings for a synchronous belt compared with a V-belt or a roller chain solution. So if I open that up, I'll just breeze through this quickly. Of course, these are all going to be some example inputs here, and the outputs will only be as good as the inputs. Um, so I'll just fill in some numbers here for my cost of energy, how frequently the drive runs, and move on to the next screen here, which shows cost information already contained within DesignPower's database. I'll move on to the next screen and select the belt I want to compare to. So if I want to show our customer Acme Lumber, the cost savings for a synchronous belt compared with their current installed V-belt, I'll go ahead and select the V-belt they have installed along with their pulley specifics. Hit next and it will auto-populate the cost information for that drive. Then I'm going to fill in some of my specifics about maintenance costs on this particular V-belt drive, hourly rate, how frequently we do all of that work, and any interruption to productivity. Hit finish and I get a summary here and then finish from there and I'll see a nice professional report that I could present to the customer to show cost savings. If I close that report, you'll see another option here to print label. This is a handy feature. You can print out something showing all of the information about this particular design which you could then post next to the design. So when our customer needs to replace uh, a belt in the future, they have all of the information here that they need in order to do that. Using these report tools really allows you to tailor your outputs to a specific drive or customer needs. Now that we've created a satisfactory report showing different drive replacement options, let's go ahead and address our customer's request for a replacement belt. I'll select New Design, call that Acme Bandsaw Belt Replacement, hit OK, and select DesignFlex Pro. Within the language of DesignFlex Pro, what we're doing now is called a known drive. We know all of the details about the drive, and we're just looking at replacement parts or tensioning information, things like that. 
I know that we have five V Super HC pulleys already installed, so I'll pick a matching belt product and I can see some details about it here. Close my belt selection window and move on to the driver column where I'll enter my 20 HP 1750 RPM motor and the customer's 7.1 inch driver pulley. I'll move on to drive detail where I'll enter my center distance as well as my tolerance of plus or minus two inches. And I'll move down to service factor. Similar situation with a normal AC motor running eight to 16 hours a day seems about right. And as far as the driven equipment, we're looking at sawmill equipment, which pushes us to this bottom row. Select that, hit OK, and you'll see my V-Belt service factor has been updated. Move over to the driven column and enter the 16 inch pulley currently installed. And you'll see the speed has already updated. I don't have any more options to select, so I'll click Design. And shown here is a drive meeting my requirements. I do have one warning, but it's just regarding installation, and the customer's been working successfully with this drive in the past, so I'm not too worried about that. I'll go ahead and double click that design and I'll bring up this report containing all of the information the customer might need, including product number, uh, as well as tensioning information. Close that report, and I would like to demonstrate one other feature within DesignFlex Pro, so I'll go back to my project view and make sure to save changes. Thanks for that reminder. Now I'd like to demonstrate our tension only feature within DF Pro. So for this example, let's assume that we had a technician at our lumber mill was working on one of our belt driven conveyor belts and had to disassemble the drive mechanism. Unfortunately, this technician forgot to record the tension. No problem, we can look everything up here in DesignFlex Pro. I'll click New Design, call this Conveyor Drive, and hit Design Flex Pro. This feature is really useful if you're working with a product that Gates no longer makes. We do still support it here within our software tools. So I'll select Tension Only, and we'll assume the customer told us this was a Power Grip GT3 eight millimeter belt, just a previous generation product for us. Close that window and proceed to enter the rest of my drive information. This belt is 1760 millimeters long. Of course, I'm just making all of this up, but we'll pretend the customer provided all of this. Uh, 20 millimeters wide, 10 horsepower motor. This one happens to spin at 870. And they told me it was a 30 tooth driver attached. I'm going to jump over to the driven side as they told me they have a 90 tooth driven pulley. I'll type that in and you'll see everything else has automatically populated, including speed and center distance details. Let's double check that service factor. Again, normal AC motor, eight to 16 hours a day is about the right range. But in this case, we are looking at a conveyor piece of equipment on the driven side. So that's two down from the top. I'll pick that box and hit okay. And once again, my synchronous belt service factor has been updated. No additional options to enter here either, so I will click Design. And I'll note here, I do have two tabs up at the top. 
This just happens when perhaps a drive is over or under designed and DF Pro is recommending something a little different than what was previously entered. We could let the customer know that, but in this case they also want to reinstall their current belt. So we can do that here under Enter Drive, no problem. Double click on that design, and this will give our customer everything they need. Under Rated Load, we do show tension only, but that's okay. They're already happy with the performance of this particular belt and want to continue using it for the rest of its life. So they have all the details down here that they'll need to retension that drive and get back up and running. With that, we've reached the end of our training on DesignFlex Pro. Thank you so much for your interest in Gates and our software tools. I do want to give a shout out to the bandsaw image shown earlier in this presentation was a result of a collaboration with one of our customers. And we have a video highlighting that collaboration on our YouTube channel as well, linked here in this video's description. Speaking of links in the description, be sure to reach out to Gates Design Software Support at gates.com with any questions or comments, and check out those links to our other trainings, including the Design Power General training and Gates Design IQ training. Thanks, and enjoy using Design Power.